on a day where the Sue L. Robinson decision, the disciplinary officer in the Watson case with the NFL and the NFLPA, that decision came down early this morning, a suspension of six games with no fine. And we'll get into that, but first we welcome you in. I'm Jim Donovan alongside Tony Grossi from ESPN 850 WKNR and the landondemand.com. Gerard Cherry from ESPN 850 WKNR. The next level weekdays three to five and my partner on the Bronx Radio Network as our new sideline reporter. Here it is, six games. It was kind of felt that we were going in that range when last night the NFL PA and the Watson camp came out and they were ready to accept the Sue Robinson decision and would not appeal and challenge the NFL to do the same. So far, the NFL has not done that and that's why this story is not complete. But let's get to the six games. What did you take of it? Well, I think when you just take that part of the decision, six games, if it stands, uh, has got to be considered a, a, a triumph for, for Watson and for the Browns in particular because you look at their schedule and they only play one division game in those first six games. And so Jacoby Brissett would be in charge of those six games. And as soon as Watson comes back, boy, you got Baltimore and Cincinnati back to back. So it's really fortuitous at this time that it was only six games. Gerard, what did you think? Uh, similar to Tony's thoughts, I felt that one, it doesn't derail the entire season with six games. You build your squad and really have your identity, who you are around game six, seven, eight, and identifying who you and what you want to be as a football team. So that gives them the opportunity to have input on that. But even more so, I felt that, hey, it's saying that what you did was not right from the league standards yes. and at the same time not completely destroying and blowing up a capable season for the Cleveland Browns. Let's go inside the Sue Robinson decision, okay? And um, it was a 16-page decision, so we're kind of melting it down. Although this is the most significant punishment ever imposed on an NFL player for allegations of nonviolent sexual conduct, Mr. Watson's pattern of conduct is more egregious than any before reviewed by the NFL. The NFL may be a forward-facing organization, but it is not necessarily a forward-looking one. Just as the NFL responded to violent conduct after a public outcry, so it seems the NFL is responding to yet another public outcry about Mr. Watson's conduct. At least in the former situation, the policy was changed and then applied proactively. Here, the NFL is attempting to impose a more dramatic shift in its culture without the benefit of fair notice to and consistency of consequence for those in the NFL subject to the policy. She beat the NFL at their own policy, really. She is saying, hey, his behavior was bad. Mm -hmm. He was in violation of the NFL conduct policy. She cited on three different cases. But she said, by your standards, the highest punishment is six games. So that's what I'm giving her. Right, and, and they basically agreed with any, everything the NFL charged and, and went further and said uh, that Deshaun Watson was not forthright. He, he didn't tell the truth on certain allegations. And he also uh, showed no remorse. I mean, this is the language in, in her report. Now, the question is, what does the NFL do about this? Right. Well, if they go ahead and try to do something about it, doesn't that send a bad message to the fact that you collectively bargained for what reason? I think so. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could have, if, if you weren't going to go by her decision, why did you have her run a decision by you in the first place? This could have been taken care of in March. Exactly. And the other part of that is, I think she's also saying, because when she says it, I think she's alluding to the Ray Rice situation. She is. That's exactly and, right. And with that in mind, you're not going to cherry pick, pun intended, this with what you're going to do from losing, using social pressure as a way to use jurisdiction on your players. So I think that does help the cause of the NFLPA and players that she's saying essentially, no, you're not just going to pull something out of the air and say we're going to apply it. All right, the NFL did respond, but not with a final ruling in the case. They, in a statement, said, we thank Judge Sue L. Robinson, the independent disciplinary officer, for her review of the voluminous record and attention during a three-day hearing that resulted in her finding multiple violations of the NFL personal conduct policy by Deshaun Watson. We appreciate Judge Robinson's diligence and professionalism throughout this process. Pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement, the NFL or the NFLPA, on behalf of Watson, may appeal the decision within three days. In light of her findings, the league is is reviewing Judge Robinson's imposition of a six-game suspension and will make a determination on next steps. Now, you know Roger Goodell used to have milkshakes with him <laughs> at uh, league meetings when he was like an assistant <laughs> to the commissioner. You believe that he wants to get out of this disciplinary-type 
judge jury situation and that he might just say all right we tried to get a year-long suspension she ruled six games this is the new policy we're going to go with it yeah that's my my first reaction is that also again going into fortuitous timing for the browns and watson we have the canton hall of fame festivities coming on the deadline for the nfl now to appeal is by thursday at 9 a.m what the game is 9 uh, 8 p.m. Thursday, right? It is. That's the, right. The, the live lifter to the new season. Uh, G- Commissioner Goodell will be in Canton. Does he want to bring this story into the introduction of the season? And, but he is one to stick his finger in the air and know where the PR winds are blowing. Yeah. Well, no and matter- they're against this decision around the around the league, around social media. Uh, the, the NFL, uh, this decision is getting panned. All right, well, here's my problem with the NFL panning the decision. Mm-hmm. If they're panning it because they don't like the ruling in the particular case, I get it. But if they're panning it because they're upset that the Browns did this trade and totally put the salary structure of a quarterback way out of whack and that suddenly their quarterbacks are going to come to them and say, everything guaranteed, just like the guy over in Cleveland. Great point. Then I have a problem with right. that. Right, and that's what I believe is going on, especially in Baltimore. I'll name names because I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're not happy with the precedent that's been set because Lamar Jackson will walk into that office and say, give me 30, 230 plus guaranteed. And how are they going to say no to him? So if you look at the people who are upset about this, who Roger Goodell obviously has to listen to as well, it's because of those factors that they've changed the paradigm of how quarterbacks and how players will be paid with guaranteed contracts. All right, the Browns have had reaction too, though they will not meet with the media and talk publicly about it from ownership and the general manager until the NFL finally makes a declaration as to what they're going to do with the decision by Sue L. Robinson. The Browns organization says that they appreciate the work and decision made by Sue L. Robinson, the federal judge, now the disciplinary officer in this case. They also realize that because of the case, and the coverage of it, that the reaction has been widespread. It has triggered reaction, a great deal of reaction, on both sides of the issue. They are sympathetic to that. And again, I think it's wise that they do not come out and really make a public statement as far as talking until they know what they're dealing with here. Exactly. I mean, there there could be another shoe to drop. We'll wait and see in the next, what, 48 hours whether it does. Yeah, but also one or two with the Hall of Fame proceedings taking place. Do you really want to have that be tarnished yep. by this? So we'll see what they'll do, obviously. But I'm just wondering, is it placed in this situation on this particular day so that we can move forward and leave this somewhat behind? Right now, the member of the organization who is speaking to the media is the head coach of the Browns on a very unique day in his young career as a head coach and certainly as a head coach with this team. Here's Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski. As you know, all along, uh, I've said and tried to be consistent that I'm going to respect this process. And as you saw today, uh, this process will continue uh, with today's ruling. Uh, This is a jointly agreed upon process from the NFLPA and the NFL. This was collectively bargained. And uh, so I'm going to respect Judge Robinson uh, and and her opinion uh, right now until more information becomes available to me. So I understand that uh, there's many, many questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Uh, but I, I also want you to know that uh, it remains a, a process uh, that, that we're uh, certainly respectful of. Head coach Kevin Stefanski on a tricky day. Um, but he talked last week about, hey, we have a plan for once this ruling comes down. When does that get released and when do we see it out there on the practice fields? Or are we seeing it? Well, I haven't noticed any change yet. It's early, but I, I think that joint practice week with the Philadelphia Eagles prior to week uh, preseason game two, after, Stefanski has said after they get by that, they start turning attention to preparing for the season rather than uh, uh, competition out here. So I think that's a critical point where we will see the, like the, the, the handing over the baton. Exactly. That's the best way to put it because when you see Jacoby Brissett be the first one out on the football field and taking the snaps yeah. as a starter, then the change has been made. Keep in mind this, guys, and, and you've brought this up, both of you. They have an extra long period of time once they play the Bears and then get set for the Carolina game. It's almost two weeks it is that they would get weeks, ready. Yeah. You could get him ready during that period of time, too. More on the Deshaun Watson case on a very unique day out here in Berea. 